Welcome back to the studio here at France 24. You're watching Eye on Africa. Let's take a look at our top stories in this edition. Disbanding Kenya's Olympics Committee, the government made the move following numerous reports of mismanagement before and during the Rio Games. We'll be getting the latest from our correspondent. No regrets. Face Elilesa's family says they understand his gesture. The Ethiopian runner did not return home after the Rio Games, afraid for his safety after making a popular protest gesture at the end of his race. And the case of the disappearing street food stalls in Lagos. Nigeria's new rules against street vendors means getting a bite to eat in so-called Mama Puts establishments is a rare treat. It's our la latest report in our series on African cuisine. Disbanding Kenya's Olympic Committee after a string of gaffes and doping accusations, the government launched an investigation into the alleged mismanagement of Kenyan athletes at the Rio Games. In addition to drawing allegations of doping before and during the Olympics, Kenyan sports officials are being blamed for a host of missteps. The country could face IOC sanctions for government interference, as already, as already the case for Kuwait, that is currently suspended from the Games. Joining Joining us for more on this story is Julia Steers, France Van Gaat's Nairobi correspondent, temporarily in New York. Julia, tell us more about what pushed the Kenyan government to make this decision. Well, the sports minister was really responding to an embarrassing show for the Kenyan National Olympics Committee over the past few weeks in Rio. Of course, I don't mean the athletes who took home 13 medals and six gold medals among them, but from the start of the games, there were reports of mishandling of athletes' travel plans, misappropriation of funds and corruption. We saw the Kenyan team walk in in mismatched uniforms and Nike lodged an official complaint saying many of the uniforms they sent for the Olympians never made it to the athletes themselves. Two Kenyan officials were uh, sent home from the games on doping related allegations. And the last straw was really in these last few days after members of the Olympics Committee left Rio, the athletes themselves remain and they say that they were transferred to uh, dilapidated and dangerous accommodations in Rio. And the outrage around that really prompted the sports minister to act today. Now, high ranking officials within the Olympics Committee have pushed back saying he may not have the authority to disband their body. So the story will likely continue to unfold in the coming days. Now, Julia, tell us, what is the root problem here? Sports analysts and the athletes themselves will tell you that the root of the problem really transcends just one governing body, that corruption and, and widespread doping issues are both rampant and systemic within the sport. And athletes have long pushed uh, to allow the athletes themselves to sit at the top of these governing bodies. They say that this would help for uh, better management uh, and addressing of the doping issues within the sport, particularly because, as they point out, this gross mismanagement really overshadows their accomplishments in long distance running, in track and field, in athletics that have long and historically been a source of national pride for Kenya. Julia Sears, thank you so much uh, for joining us there on the latest uh, on Kenya's uh, 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 Olympics Committee. Fearing for his life, Ethiopian marathon runner and Rio silver medalist Faisa Lilesa vows to keep fighting for the Omoro people's land rights. In retaliation for crossing his arms in a protest gesture after the race and telling reporters about government brutality, Lilesa doesn't dare return home, despite assurances of his safety from the authorities. Lilesa's family, meanwhile, told reporters it supported the athlete's decision. Nicola Germain has more. The daughter of Olympic marathon silver medalist Faisa Lelisa is looking for her father. He didn't return with the rest of Ethiopia's squad on Tuesday. That's because at the finish line in Rio he crossed his wrists, a sign taken up by protesters in the Oromia region. The government says he can return home without fear, but his mother is skeptical. Do you really believe what the government is saying? <laughs> I don't believe them. He should stay away. I would have liked him to come home. But what can I do? I was crying too much the other day, but now I'm feeling better. I wish him well. 
For months, the Oromos have demonstrated over land rights. Human Rights Watch says at least 400 people have been killed by security forces. Lelisa's wife says she understands the athlete's political gesture. I was very scared at the time, but I wasn't surprised because I know him. He was burning inside when he saw on social media all those dead bodies, people being beaten up and arrested. So I was not surprised because I know how angry he is. The Oromos represent more than a third of the population. They feel marginalized by the government whose members for more than two decades have come mostly from the Tigray minority ethnic group. With the backing of his family, Lelisa is now reportedly seeking asylum in the United States. A gunfight erupted in Mogadishu this Thursday as Shabab militants attacked a beach restaurant in the Somali capital with a car bomb, according to both the police and insurgents. The casualty figure is still unknown. Attacks take place almost every day in Somalia. On Sunday, more than 20 people were killed in a double suicide car bombing in the semi-autonomous Puntland region. Lending public support to his finance minister, South African President Jacob Zuma said he has full, quote, full confidence in Praveen Gordon, a statement that partly revived the RAND and government bonds. But analysts say Zuma's support may not go far. The presidency and the finance ministry have disagreed over government spending and in particular over a 60 billion U.S. dollar nuclear plant project. Gordon is officially being targeted for a secret spy team in the tax unit. He was summoned to an inter interrogation by police this Thursday, but he refused to attend. The charges are wholly unfounded. I therefore do not intend to present myself for a warning statement for many considerations, both legal, legal and given my other commitments. I remain committed to assist the Hawks in any bona fide investigation as stated in my statement. I have a job to do in a difficult economic environment and serve, serve South Africa as best I can. Let me do my job. Now let's take a look at what else is making headlines around the continent in South African anti-apartheid campaigner Desmond Tutu is in the hospital. The 84-year-old is getting treatment in Cape Town for a recurring infection. Nobel Prize laureate and Archbishop Emeritus Tutu underwent similar treatment last year. A Somali bank teller is on the run. A senior cashier is wanted for allegedly stealing 530,000 U.S. dollars by exchanging real bills with fake ones. Police and security agencies are hunting for him. Several other staff members are also being questioned. Corruption and theft are rampant in Somalia. In 2013, a U.N. monitoring group reported the country had become a, quote, slush fund for political leaders. Self-interest or a directive from the people, Burundi could erase presidential term limits from its constitution. This after a commission set up last year by President Pierre Nkurunziza said most citizens did not want them. Currently, the limit is two five-year terms, but in April of last year, Nkurunziza bypassed that rule, seeking a third term, which led to violence that's killed more than 500 people and pushed 270,000 to flee the country. For the past few weeks, we've been exploring the African continent's cuisine. Today, we'll be taking you to Lagos in Nigeria, where roadside cafes known as Mama Puts serve traditional dishes to hungry and curious passers-by. But as our correspondents show in this report, those roadside stalls are disappearing fast now that Nigerian authorities are cracking down on street vendors. me don't finish for here. Go check now. This mama boot in the heart of Lagos has been here for the past five years. Business is stable despite the current economic downturn. The women live in poverty, but their work here means they mingle with relatively wealthy customers who they would otherwise not meet. Very, very happy. Very, very happy. Sometimes I would like to chat with my customer, we discuss, we just, you know, so I forget about solo. So I like this work. It's kind of work that you meet up with some people, see different faces. So that is it. All dishes are prepared right here on the roadside. While hygiene may not reach the standards of formal restaurants, their clients can see fresh produce being cooked in front of them. The women work 12 hours per day, 
and some of them start at 2 o'clock in the morning. Those who live far away even prefer to sleep here so as not to miss out on business from the first clients, many of whom are bankers. People here, they have a bank around here and a company, so they come here earlier to come and eat. That is the morning food. They started selling around 6.30 to 7. So we wake up early, then to cook before 5.30, 6, everything is set. Competition is fierce among the different mamaputs in Lagos. So each street cafe makes sure to cater to a given client's requirements. Customers can help themselves to their own portion. And those who are prepared to pay extra are served more quickly. Even with the rapid growth of national and international food chains, Mama Poots continue to have a loyal following among Nigerians who prefer local dishes. And they use the native spices that will help to boost the immune system of every living being. That is one of the reasons why I decided to choose Mama Poots. The Lagos state government is in the process of destroying thousands of informal businesses. Nonetheless, these women remain confident because they serve people working for big businesses. They think that if it came to it, their clients would defend them against the bulldozers. And we end this bulletin with the latest hit from Uganda's singing policeman, Expe Inspector Samuel Ojobira, or Afanda OJ, as he's known in the music world, is enjoying newfound celebrity. His songs and two mu music videos are all on the theme of how great Uganda's police force is. Despite recent reports of police brutality, Afanda OJ insists the public is, quote, overwhelmingly happy with Uganda's force. We leave you with his biggest hit, Physically Fit. More news coming up on France 24 in just a minute. L'Afrique qui bouge, c'est tous les soirs sur France 24. Here on France 24, we track the twists and turns of the global economy for you. France 24, So many of us are French or half French or have just been living here for a really long time, and that gives us a unique insider's perspective. Ce qui est vraiment sympa à France 24, c'est qu'on produit vos émissions partout dans le monde, même dans les endroits les plus reculés. Ça, c'est vraiment cool.